Does it ramp out? Why are we out doing donuts in this thing? I think it's out of gas. I think it ran out of gas. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Something wrong. Anyway, we're going to rip the engine out of this thing. Put time belt in it. Put some rings in it. Because it's using gross amounts of oil. We got some wheels to go on it. We're gonna clean it up, wax it up, do the interior, get the windows tended. It'll be our new lunch cruiser. Actually, it's gonna be Desiree's new car. <laughs> Grocery getter. Grocery getter. Ooh, smokes. Stinked up the shop. some wheels on the little truck. These are the wheels I'm gonna run, little circuit wheels. They stick out a little bit, but I don't know. I guess that makes it look cool. I just checked the rear end gears. This thing's got 523 gears in it. 523 to one, should be pretty slow. So this transmission has, whoa, that's a good shot. Has fourth, this transmission has fourth and fifth locked out. They say you cut the rods off or something inside. I'm going to tear that apart try to figure it out. They say the gears are there. They're just locked out. And then we're going to drop this whole engine assembly, transmission and all out the bottom. I just drained the oil. The oil was probably half the problem. It's clear full of gas. But uh, I have reins and a timing belt that I had gasket. So I'm just going to go ahead and tear it apart and rebuild it. Get the thing... Uh, dialed in and tightened up and make it uh turbo worthy because we're going to put a little turbo on this thing and uh we'll get fourth and fifth gear working and then hopefully it'll go faster than 30 miles an hour So we got the transmission cover off here and uh, we're about ready to cut this shaft off. So these two stoppers on here, you see one here and one here, that's what that shift rod was hitting. So this I believe is uh, the one, two, and then I think the three, four is above this, it's a little different, and then this is the this is the reverse and fifth so um, what I'm doing I've measured the length of this because I have it in third gear if you'll watch here if I can film this that will go in flush and then that is the gear we've been restricted 
right there, which is fifth. That's for sure fifth. So what I have to do is I have to shorten the end of this so that it is that length right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little mark on there. Once I get a little mark on that, that little nub, I'll reach in there with a cutoff wheel and carefully cut it off. So we're going to reach in here. And then what I'll do, once I have it cut, if I need to, I can grind the end of it off a little bit. And once we bolt the cover back on, then it should no longer hit. Then we have to tear the back off and do the same thing back there. So what we're going to do now, I think I'll put some tape over this bearing. That way we don't fill them all full of metal. And then we'll cut it off. I'll show you. Just like that, we've cut that much off. That, that much kept it from going into gear. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the whole reasoning to, behind this, but now that little uh, shaft, it'll be hard to see it, but then that's reversed. As long as it doesn't fall clear out of the trans, we're good. So now what we'll do is clean up our mess and zip the front of this back together. Turn around and do the other side, see if we can get uh, a fourth fourth is our other gear. Actually, that might have been fourth. So, yeah, fifth fifth is the, the back one. So that's fourth. So fourth is the hardest gear to, to recover. But you got to take all this clutch apart. It's, it's very difficult to get the pins out. But we got them. Have to glue that a little. Basically, I had to glue this little bevel washer. It doesn't want to stay in place. It holds that bearing tight. It sets the preload on everything. Now let's check it one more time. Fourth gear. These little nasty finger biting clips. We hook there. Ah. Can't see, can't hold the light. One of them that are headlamps, I guess. I like it. I believe it's going to work. At least that gear. So we'll turn it around and do the other side. Okay, here we go. Tear any of the gaskets. Not sure what we're catching on. 
hanging up on something. Oh, there we go. A little oil here to deal with. And I have this ball that fell out, which I believe goes there. So when you roll reverse right there, so we just need to cut enough of that off that that reverse ball stays in there because that's fifth right there so essentially when you shift that which I can't shift it and I'm just messing up the gasket um, that'll slide back that'll engage fifth right here on the back Send it back through and over, a little over. Gear's brand new, it's never even been used. But I think we need to cut probably about the same amount off back here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this piece and mount it here and mark it. Except I'm not gonna use my air grinder this time because I'm We've got a lot more room, so I'm going to use my cutoff wheel. Just like that, it's cut off. And then I'm going to grind a little. Precision, precision, except I don't think I took enough off, eh, probably close, I'll grind a little more. Okay, I want this thing to go into fifth gear and see what it looks like. There's fifth gear. Okay, so probably what I ought to do is try to put the rear cover back on with two bolts. Oh yeah, I took it over to drain it. Shift it into fifth gear. Grabbing enough detent. We're in fair. Yeah, I think we're good. So we'll just put this back together. So this ball goes in here with this. That is your reverse, which I probably should have checked that. Need to put it in reverse and then make sure that need to make sure we didn't cut too much. Yeah, I know we didn't cut too much. We're good. All right, so it's time to move on to the motor. I've got two pistons done. I'm working on putting this one in. Check out this rain compressor I made. I made it out of a hose clamp and a little piece of hardened sheet metal. Looks like an old-fashioned rain compressor. Anyway, that's what it took to get the thing together. It's the first bearing that's looked like anything. That one's got a little bit of scarring in it there. I didn't buy bearings for it because they're $300 and the rings were $300 and I just couldn't justify putting all that money into a 
$500 mini truck. A bit of scarring on that one. Just had a little piece of tape in it or something when it was assembled. Look at these cute little pistons. Ain't them cute? Little tiny things. It's like a two and three eighths bore with a three and a quarter inch stroke. I don't like the oil ring that came with the uh, kit. The oil ring that came is this cast iron thing and it's a piece of junk. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching the spring and I'm reinstalling the original oil ring. The original oil ring's not really hurt. This thing just got sand run through it and it hurt the, the second ring so we'll just clean that and put it right back on. Sounds like the boss is coming. What are you doing? I'm trying to put together a little mini truck. Are you talking to yourself or are you filming? I'm talking to myself. Oh. Rennie? Who the hell's listening? Hey, I brought you some Angelina's. You did? I did. Dang, that means dinner's here. The beach? Yeah, she People would go to the beach. It's not fair. It's not fair. So, I guess I'm going to have to go have some Italian food before I get this other piston in. Yeah, so these rings had to come out of Japan. They were very expensive. But, uh, I don't know, hopefully they don't burn oil. They aren't marked. So I'm having to look at each ring and see the way they're cut. So your second oil ring, your second ring is a scraper, so the sharp edge should be down. So I'm looking at it in the light. Actually, I forgot to do something. So on the last one, I went to put it in, and it was too big. I think maybe they gave me a 20 over ring, so I had to grind the gap. And I was going to check this one, but now I've got it on here, and I'm stuck. So what we'll do, if I don't break it, dang, it's terribly tight. Take you over here and tell you what I got. So the other ring I went to put it in and the gaps came together and only did it on one ring. So yeah, that one's good. So the other ring one set had a second groove ring that was basically 20, 20 or 30 over and I had to grind the end gap to make it fit in. Won't hurt anything to do that. You just have to pay attention to those little details when you assemble your motors. Never trust anything out of the package. It's always wrong. Never trust the dots on the pistons. They're always marked wrong. Okay, been a long day working on this uh, hot rod truck. Engine's back together. Rings are installed. Head gaskets in. New timing belt. Torqued. Transmission. Uh, fourth and fifth are activated now. Uh, I need to go get an oil filter. Um, some spark plugs. Pretty fouled. And uh, a belt. And then... Uh, Put that motor back in in the morning. Got this thing ready to lower. And hot rod round. So let's run to AutoZone and get well, some. Well, we had a successful trip to AutoZone.
belt, oil filter, mounting brackets back on, carburetors on, EGRs blocked off, all tuned up. Um, yeah, I guess uh, oil's in it. We are ready to stab her back in here. It's definitely a lot of room in these things. You could probably put any kind of engine. I think I could fit a Cummins in there. Tunnel it up right there. It'd be kind of rowdy. Cummins in one of these little bitty trucks. We'll blow this engine up. Maybe that's what we'll do. Well, it's time to put some exhaust in this little pickup truck. New day in the shop. And uh, I found this out in the junk pile. I like the way it fits, except this needs to go this way. So I think I'm just gonna cut it back in here and try to manipulate it. Because it fits in here pretty good. So we'll get on that, see if we can get her to get her to fit. See. All right, other than a couple of hangers, I think I'm gonna take this hanger and move it over here. And then this hanger I think will work. This one I may cut off and move it in, cut it off here and move it in just a little bit. But yeah, we got two one and, I think they're one and a half inch pipes into a two and a quarter. Glass pack muffler and two and a quarter out the back. That should breathe plenty for this little hot rod. So we'll get the hangers done and then we'll fire it up. I think I gotta go to the airport and get av gas though. Well, we've got fuel. We've got battery. We've got coolant. Wonder if the gas gauge works. Oh, here comes the fuel. Oh, I think the gas gauge does work. It's coming up. Let's see if we got all of our gears now. Maybe I should test that on the hoist. It's the third. So before we have first, second, third. And then when it came into fourth, it locked out. Oh, we got fourth. There's reverse. Fourth. Fifth. We got five gears. See how they're locked out on there? We got a zero on them. No gear. Okay. Ooh, the oil light works now too. I figure it's probably going to smoke pretty good for a little while because the uh, valves, and the intake, and the exhaust, it's all 
<clears throat> yeah, it's all full of oil, so we got to burn all that off. The manifold's got oil in it. It's going to take a little while to burn that stuff out, but open this up and let it air out in here. Sounds like it's got a little too much timing in it, so we need to pull some timing out. 12 millimeter wrench. And then set the idle. the idle air screw out and adjust that a little bit and get her to settle down here and smooth up. This is going to be a good time. Can't wait to go drive it. Smoke's starting to clear up. That exhaust hot. Burn all that out of the manifold. I mean, man. So moving on here. Got a little bit of a clearance issue right here. I'm going to have to cut the door. And then I'm thinking I can just get rid of all this right here. I'll just start right here. Cut it down right there and just cut that off get rid of that lip right there seem to have the problem on both sides and then, uh, the door this one's mangled anyway but if I have to I'll cut what I need off of there and weld a little plate to the bottom of the door clean that up I don't know that we really need this lip seal here either so pull that out Clean that up. I think that's just a rain seal for the tire. So the tire doesn't splash it up into the door jam. Cut basically rusted out, but we don't have rain here like the rest of the world, so plus this door doesn't really fit right. I gotta make this door shut better. I think what happened was I backed this into something and jarred it. You can see where it's all bent here. But uh, I'll get it straightened up and we'll get it to shut right. Alrighty, so one side is cut. Now we'll duplicate it on the other side should be good. So yeah, I didn't take very much off, just that little piece there, and then we cut that corner off. Looks good. So we'll uh, finish grinding the sharp edges off, and and uh, I don't know, we may be test driving later today. What are you doing, Rennie? You got a haircut yesterday. Yeah, you're all pretty today. Now we got the fenders cleared. It's time to fix this ugly steering wheel. So we're going to get rid of that. I'll probably cut this apart and make my adapter. And we'll make that fit on here. Make it look cool. I don't 
that'll be our new steering device. So let's get on that and break up that steering wheel and get the center out of it and do some welding. Well, it's not pretty, but I got it out. The reason I'm going to all this trouble is because they don't make an adapter for this Mitsubishi. They make them for the Honda Acti and the Subarus and all that, but not this little Mitsubishi. What are you doing, Jimmy? Dude, what are you doing? I've been working on our, our new ride. This looks fun. <laughs> Dude, I had the motor out of it yesterday. Did you? Oh, yeah, Ron yeah, told me. I rebuilt it. I got I got all the gears. Are you serious? That speedometer wow. goes to 140 kilometers, and it'll bury it. It'll bury it. <laughs> wow. Those rims are pimp. They look good, huh? They look great. Yeah. I don't know why it surges like that. It, uh, it'll, it'll stabilize and it'll, I think the, the metering valve is bouncing in the car. Uh -oh. I don't know how to adjust the bypass, but it'll get smooth and then it'll fall. It'll get smooth and it'll fall. But it revs good, runs good. Wow. Still burning off a little bit so of you got the, oil. Uh, you got the rev out. Does it ramp out? <laughs> Why are we out doing donuts in this thing? Because we're trying to put a steering <laughs> wheel in it, and I've been cutting the fenders to get them to clear. But wow! Yeah, it revs. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it goes to about seventy-five hundred. Dude, that's awesome. No limit on this one. But uh, yeah, it was a cute little motor inside. I uh, after really looking the motor over. Yeah. There's, there's no way we could turbo it. No? Dude, the pistons are like... Oh. I, I think lawnmowers are heavier duty. Oh, really? I'm afraid that it'll break a skirt Yeah. shatter a piston. But uh, I think if we mess around with this carburetor, it, it sounds like it's going to run pretty good. Sounds freaking amazing. So That sounds way too good. We'll get some upholstery in it and a steering wheel on it, and we'll be out doing burnouts later today. All right, Ron stopped by. He stopped by to uh, see what was going on. He was going to buy me lunch, but I already snuck out to lunch. But anyway, this is pretty ugly, but we got the center out of there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bolt that on there. We're going to have to oval one of these holes out because I had to go off to the side just a little. And then I painted my little shield that'll go on. Okay, she's starting to come together. So we drilled and tapped that ugly old piece of steering wheel. And we'll clean that ring up. That's the horn piece. Ran the wire through. Um, so yeah, we're getting ready to assemble the steering wheel pieces. So we'll put the horn button in and get this all figured out. Actually, I think I gotta put this on first, then put this on on the vehicle. So because this has an encapsulated horn button. So we'll do that now. And then uh, I'll show you the finished result. Horn check. Makes it look faster. Probably doesn't make it go any faster, but it looks faster. So we got to get these seats. The upholstery shop. Okay, so we're bright and early here at Motor Vehicle. I'm trying to get a VIN number attached to the little uh, Mitsubishi. So, yeah, DOT. Officer has done the inspection and now he's looking it up to see what he can find for information. And hopefully we can get a VIN number attached. It has a stamped body number, but there's no VIN number per se. So he'll attach a VIN. Um, I think it's like 50 bucks for that or something. And then I have to go get a vehicle bond, which protects previous owners if somebody claims it was theirs and myself. And then I think I can register it. So let's see how this goes. So we went and had an inspection. They ended up using the chassis stamped number because it was not in the system. So he made that the VIN number. 
Um, he put the mileage in kilometers, which is, is actual 13,000. People think it's 113,000, but it's not. There's a zero in front of that. Went to uh, an insurance underwriter and they wrote a bond. Um, had to bond it for $3,500 or something. But anyway, they registered it with basically a motorcycle ATV plate. Um, the uh, registration, basically, they, they labeled it as an all-terrain vehicle. So it's an ATV. And uh, that means that I can't operate it on interstate highways, um, highways with a posted speed limit over 55 miles an hour. I think in some states that's 45 miles an hour, but here it's 55. Um, but anyway, and then uh, I called Haggerty. Haggerty does all my insurance, and they insured it. So they insured it as a Cushman truck. So it's a Cushman ATV truck. So we're in third gear. That was basically all we had before. Fourth. Sounds good. And fifth. Cruises along pretty quietly. So yeah, I think we did good. <laughs> we got room for a chick. Uh huh. Hold on to that power, Jimmy. <laughs> like new, doesn't it? <laughs> now there's fifth. Wow. Definitely not going to win no races. <laughs> it makes so much noise for how slow we're going. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It's like if that was a Ferrari, we'd be doing 120 through there. <laughs> Sounds like a Ferrari. I know, right? Not too bad. Jimmy's, Jimmy's not sold yet. He wants a turbo. We may have to turbo it. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We're going to breakfast. Desiree's driving her little truck. Her flowers are blue too. Yeah, they are. This is your new vehicle. This is your new Havasu vehicle. How do you like it? Great. <laughs> That's 55, I'll give it that. <laughs> Ain't no 65 in this, maybe downhill. It's pretty sketchy though. Yeah, Jimmy and I got it to 55, that was it. We're like, yeah, we don't wanna go no faster. Okay, so now what do you think after you've drove it? I feel like a truck driver. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of tight. <laughs> Just finished up breakfast here at Rusty's Restaurant, barbecue, world famous. Um, What's up, viewers? Timmy. Yes, sir. I want you to come and look at what I'm driving, and I want to see if you can fit in it. But let's do it. <laughs> this is your new barbecue rig. Well, I appreciate that. In high school, I used to drive a mini truck. Now, I don't even know if I can fit in the cab. Well, this is kind of a mini truck. Yes, just, just saying. I just, I was laughing at Jimmy because we got in it and we couldn't hardly, like our heads rubbing the ceiling. I'm like, do you think Timmy can even get in this thing? Oh, no, no. We got to get in it methodically here. <laughs> yeah, don't twist an ankle or. Wait, he, I guess wait. I got to put my head in first. <laughs> you have to put your head in first. Oh, this is terrible. I didn't realize you guys this time. Exactly. 
At least I can sit up straight. Is your head touching the ceiling? Barely. Just my hair is. Just, just your, you just your spiked hair. Do you think you could operate the clutch? We can do that. We got the brake. Yeah. yeah. Just don't hit them turns. I don't know if I stop if we're going to endo, though. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you, Tim? 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four. So a 6'4 man can... 285 pounds. Can fit in the truck if he's careful. <laughs> All right, where are we going? <laughs> this is our new uh, body beach summer jet ski Ooh, rig. The sides how many fat guys, how many, how many fat guys can we fit in this? We can get down to body beach. We'll let you know. How much you know? can y'all put on? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> we could do like the old circus used to do with like, all the clowns and the oh the yeah, Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, totally right. <laughs>